So, uh, so thank you for having me. My name's Stuart Swan. I work for a company called PyTop. You'll find it's just down there on, on stand D10. Um, I have a background in primary education. I'm a primary teacher by trade and have been for almost 25 years now. Um, and I've, I've found myself going through various um, iterations, I guess, of, of my career from being in, in school to working with local government back home in, 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 in London and through as a, as a Lego education trainer and an Apple education trainer. And now I find myself as physical computing curriculum lead at PyTop. Um, PyTop is a company that makes modular computing devices. The idea is that we can take the classroom anywhere. The world is our classroom. And I want to talk to you a little bit about how we do that and, and also pick up on some of the points that, 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 that your previous speaker made, um, who was, made some fantastic points about innovation and sustainability and about the way in which children learn. So, in order to do that, I'd like to talk to you about baking. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, and I don't know if you have that, this program over here, if, if, if it's made its way over here, but we have a program in the UK called the Great British Bake Off. And in that show, amateur, amateur bakers, amateur cooks come together every week and they're all given some ingredients, and they're all asked to make something. And the first couple of times this happens, they're all given the same ingredients, and they're all given the same recipes. And it's really about how well those contestants follow instructions, follow a recipe in order to make a really good cake that everybody can eat. And that's great, and it's all well and good, and we can find out an awful lot about people about how well they follow instructions. But the excitement really comes, and we really see a difference as being made, when these contestants have the same ingredients, but they're asked to make whatever they want. And that's when we really start to see some flair. That's when we really start to see what these people can do with the same ingredients, where their imaginations take them, and really, essentially, how good a baker they are. And I think we can apply that to education. And we're in a situation right now, and this has been building for, for quite a number of years, and particularly back home in the UK, but we've, we've, we've seen this globally, where our education system just really requires our students, our, our, our learners, and to some extent our teachers, to follow a recipe card to get to the same answer as everybody else. And the reason we do that is actually based in, you know, in, 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 in quite sound sort of economic and industrial theory, or at least it was sound about 150 years ago when we were building a workforce to work in factories or to work in offices. We needed a kind of standardized way of doing things so we could measure our learners against a set of outputs. But it's not so relevant now. It's not so prevalent now. Our world faces some quite radical changes. We're on the cusp of what the World Economic Forum is calling the fourth industrial revolution. And that's characterized by a lot of things that Ollie was talking about in, in the previous talk. Self-driving cars, AR, VR, robotics, aut home automation, and so forth. So I think we have to ask ourselves, is the skill of simply following a set of instructions really preparing our learners and preparing our future workers, innovators, to not just survive in this rapidly changing world, but to thrive in it? and to be able to shape it? And truly, I think, at the moment, the answer is no. Our, our systems aren't really allowing for that. So we need to change it, and we need to really think about the way that our students learn. If we look at, again, the World Economic Forum and what they are citing as the competences and the skills 
that the next generation of um, innovators, of workers, of graduates, will need by 2020. There are 10 that they identify, and I can't quite name them all, I'm afraid, but the majority of them really focus on things like problem solving, collaboration, critical thinking, teamwork, risk taking, learning how to fail. Um, you know, all those things that we, I, I guess we, 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 uh, we classify as 21st century skills. Or maybe they should be called 22nd century skills, considering we're almost 20 years into the 21st century. So if we look at that against the measurement system of what is an, an awful lot of education systems around the world, there's a disconnect there, isn't there? There's a disconnect between what we are measuring our students against, what we're measuring our learners against, and what respected organizations like the World Economic Forum and so forth are saying our, our future innovators need. So, so how do we do that? And it's, and it, and it's, a, it's a bit of a head scratcher, and it's, and, it, and it's one of the things that we are addressing or hoping to address at PyTOP where we've created a set of learning resources that will take our students from simply following instructions through being able to tinker, being able to play, and being able to create and share something really magical. So we might start, for example, by teaching our students how to light an LED light. Fairly simple, fairly straightforward. We can wire it up, we can show them how to do that. We can give them some code and show them how to turn that light on. Okay, that's, that's the instruction following. But we then start to crash them into problems. Because learning, lifelong learning, is all about problem solving. And those problems might be something like, now get a buzzer. And now wire that buzzer up and now code it so it makes a sound. But we're not going to tell you how to do it. Instead, the knowledge that you got from lighting an LED is transferable to making a buzzer make a noise. So straight away, we're asking them to tinker. We're asking them to come up with their own solutions to a particular problem. We then go into a stage that, was, that we're calling play. And in the play stage, it's about personalization and making something meaningful to them. Our friend Seymour Papert defined what he called constructionism, something that he, that he, that he derived from Piaget's con constructivism, as students making something that is meaningful to them, making an artifact that is meaningful to them by using their hands and building what he called social objects. And that's exactly where we are, where we're going here. Making something meaningful, using those skills and applying them to your passion. So within the classroom, we now no longer have 30 projects that are all the same. We no longer have 30 cakes that are all the same. We now have 30 different cakes using the same ingredients. Okay. And then beyond that, how do we start to share? How do I say to you, what did you make? Oh, this is what I made. How did you solve that problem? Can we now work together? Can we create something together? And then share that with the world. And really, only by learning like this, or creating these learning environments, I believe, can we start to address the needs of this rapidly changing world? Can we start to uh, foster these competencies in our students that will satisfy what the World Economic Forum is saying, our, 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 our young people and even our older people are going to need in less than a year's time, by 2020. And there's a lot around this show that's doing that. I know Oli talk, talked about that as well. There's some, great, uh, there's some great innovation around here that's really starting to address that. And I feel that we're in very, very good company. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you.